that whiskey. All right, uh, so this is Apple's predicament, uh, NS predicate exploitation on macOS and iOS. Uh, my name is Austin Emmett, and I also go by Alkali. Let's get into it. Um, so a little bit more information about me. I'm, I'm currently a vulnerability researcher at Vigilant Labs, uh, though the research that I'm going to be presenting today was done while I worked at the Trellix Advanced Research Center. Um, uh, I'm also the author of the RADIUS2 Symbolic Execution Framework, which uses uh, Radari2 to easily, uh, quickly and easily perform symbolic execution and taint analysis on binaries from many different architectures. Um, check that out if it's something you're interested in. Um, I'm Alkaline Sec on Twitter. Uh, I mean X, and I'm Alkali at InfoSec, InfoSec Exchange on Mastodon. All right, let's talk about where this all sort of began with the forced entry exploit. Um, I've been obsessed with NS predicates since I read the second part of the Project Zero's blog post about the forced entry attack, which was a exploit chain targeting iOS in 2001, uh, 2021. Um, the first post covered an iMessage exploit that sent a fake GIF that was actually a PDF, uh, which exploited an integer overflow in the JBIG2 uh, image compression codec. And it was this absolutely incredible exploit um, that used the operations on groups of pixels to create an entire virtual machine. Um, oh, shoot. Um, the ultimate purpose of this virtual machine was to create uh, and evaluate an NS predicate, uh, which sent another, another NS predicate to an unsandboxed process. Uh, while the iMessage exploit received most of the attention, I was fascinated by the sandbox escape and these NS predicates, these tiny little strings that were capable of defeating all of iOS security. So why was I so fascinated? The answer is because iOS hacking is hard. It's very hard. Um, iOS is a hard target because it has common mitigations like ASLR, address space layout randomization, though on iOS it's a little bit limited, which we'll get to later. Um, but more importantly, iOS also has other less common mitigations, like strict code signing, which prevent uh, any dynamically generated code from being executed. Um, only co code signed with an Apple-approved certificate can be run on the device in its normal form of operation. Um, also, uh, every form of scripting has either been removed, like Apple Script, um, or heavily sandboxed, like the JavaScript engine. Additionally, modern iPhones and Macs have PAC or pointer authentication codes, and these are codes made up of the, some of the previously unused top bits of pointers, um, and special instructions set and check them in order to prevent code reuse methods like RAP or return-oriented return programming. So if a function pointer on like the stack or the heap is overwritten, uh, these bits will no longer match their expected values and an exception will be raised when it's called via one of those special branch instructions. Um, finally, apps run in a sandbox with permissions restricted to only what the app needs to function. Access to sensitive content is often done through IPC with more privileged service processes. Um, so all this makes life very difficult for hackers who really want a way to reliably perform arbitrary operations dynamically, ideally outside of any sandbox. And it turns out that this is exactly what NS predicates get us. Uh, so in order to understand a little bit more about the security of iOS, we have to understand Objective-C. Uh, it's the language that most of the user space code is written in. Although a lot of new code is written in Swift, there's still all of these you know, old frameworks that are, are written basically all in Objective-C. Um, and it's a superset of C with object-oriented uh, programming concepts added in a way similar to Smalltalk, um, which is based on message passing, where methods are invoked dynamically at runtime by name. Uh, these names are called selectors in the, in the parlance of Objective-C. Um, and methods can be added and removed at runtime as well as have their, their types changed. Uh, it's a very dynamic language, at least the, the object-oriented part of it. Um, it's also possible to access properties and call methods without arguments using strings concatenated with periods. Uh, these strings are called key paths, uh, and they're going to be important in the context of NS predicates. Uh, this is just like a basic hello world Objective-C program. Uh, it's got nearly all the elements that we're, we're going to care about, though. Uh, so we have this NS string, which is the basic immutable string class in Objective-C, and we call string by appending string a method on the string hello with the argument world to get the NS string hello world. It's 
pretty, pretty simple stuff. Uh, then we can use the key path string dot uppercase string dot utf8 string to get a C string pointer, which can we, we can print with printf. Um, and the apps in front of the quotes are just like an easy way to create constant NS strings. All right. So we're nine slides in, uh, and I haven't talked about what the hell an NS predicate is yet. So I should probably get into that. Um, the Apple documentation says they are a definition of logical conditions for constraining a search for a fetch or for in-memory filtering. Uh, this definition kind of sucks. Uh, they're simply strings that are used to filter objects and arrays. It's the majority of their use. Um, so if you have like a, a student object, you might uh, select students in array with predicates like grade equals seven or first name like Juan and age less than 16. Um, these strings are actually format strings, so you can use uh, percent, and, uh, percent escaped strings like, like percent sign D um, to include a number that is uh, passed to a predicate with format in order to initialize the NS predicate. It's kind of like printf, you know. Um, the, the NS predicates also implement NS coding, and that just means they can be serialized. Um, and that allows them to be sent via IPC to other processes or even remotely uh, to other devices. Um, and the important thing about NS predicates is that they're ubiquitous in iOS and macOS first party and third party code. They're used absolutely everywhere. They're intertwined with all of the software on these devices. Uh, so we need a quick explainer of XPC. Um, so to expand on that last point, let's discuss XPC. It's a common form of inter-process communication where one process can call methods on a remote object in another process. Uh, when XPC is used to call a remote method, these arguments are passed by the sender. They're serialized or archived is, is what the serialization process is called on iOS and macOS and sent to the target where they are deserialized. Um, and it's common to see NS predicate arguments uh, used to filter the results of these remote calls, and that's in order to minimize the number of objects that need to be serialized um, on the sender end and deserialized on the receiver end. Um, this is foreshadowing. Uh, <laughs> just in case it wasn't already abundantly clear, it's going to become very important that NS predicates are being sent all around via XPC. So here's an example of, a, of an NS predicate in action, just a short little program here, uh, where we have uh, an array containing some file names, and we use the predicate path extension equals pi to filter it, and the resulting array just contains that single entry script.py. To get a little bit deeper into the actual structure of an NS predicate, um, that string is parsed by code uh, generated with flex in the foundation framework into pieces called NS expressions and NS predicate operators. So in this uh, example from Code Colorist, um, a predicate name equals apple is parsed into three pieces. The NS key path expression name, the equals equals NS equality predicate operator, and the NS constant value containing the, the single constant string uh, apple. And the key path expression is also a function expression, which means it can be further broken down into an operand, which is self, showing that it acts on the objects being filtered, um, the selector, which is value for key, and that key path specifier, which is just name. Um, this is all a bit complicated, but it's not, not really necessary to understand this, this AST structure. More important for us is the question of what can an NS predicate do? And the answer to that question is anything. Um, sort of. Uh, it used to be anything, but now there's a big asterisk since Apple has taken many steps to make NS predicates much less powerful, less useful for exploitation. Um, in fact, nearly all the techniques I'm going to talk about today no longer work as they're going to be presented. Um, but we'll take a look at NS predicates as they were at this time and at the limits of what could be done with them. So while first, at first glance NS predicates don't look very interesting, they're actually a powerful scripting language. Um, as Code Colorist said in his blog post, see no eval, um, NS predicates are essentially the eval function for Objective-C. And this scripting capability comes largely from the function keyword, uh, which allows any method to be called on any object uh, with any number of arbitrary arguments. Um, Code Colorist also discovered that the cast keyword could be used with the uh, class as the second argument in order, in order to get a reference to any class. Uh, essentially functioning like NS class from string. It's just a, a function that you know if you've programmed much Objective-C. Uh, 
an interesting thing to note is that this functionality is both intended and very old. Um, function expressions were added in Mac OS 10.5 around the year 2007, and that means that they've been in iOS since the very beginning. Um, this is official uh, Apple documentation showing how to use function expressions, so they were never a secret. With the cast class trick, it was also possible to uh, use these helpful classes like CN file services, which had the DL sim method to get a pack signed address to any exported function. Um, this address could be called with NS invocation, which has a method uh, invoke using imp, and that could be used to call the function with any number of arbitrary arguments as well. So effectively, both the object oriented methods of Objective C uh, could be used, and also any exported simple C function could be called without restriction. That means that anything that could be done in a normal Objective-C program could be done completely dynamically within this NS predicate string. And this allows it to completely sidestep ASLR, code signing, and pack, all those mitigations that I talked about in the beginning that makes iOS so secure. Uh, so this was beautiful. For hackers, not for people that wanted their device secure. Um, <laughs> so the syntax of NS predicate, oh, Sorry. Uh, so until now, uh, the only NS predicates we've seen have been like first name equals one. So it's understandable if you're confused about how NS predicates could be used as a scripting language. But they actually have a surprisingly rich uh, syntax that's capable of representing all the concepts that we would want in a scripting language. And um, that includes uh, variables and variable setting using these uh, dollar sign strings. There's also a uh, function and key path expressions that we've talked about a little bit. Um, but there's also this important type of function expression, uh, which is those that don't need to use the function keyword, uh, like now and sum. And these are selectors on the NS predicate utilities class. And they provide these kind of uh, useful auxiliary uh, methods for within a uh, predicate. Um, but we'll see that it's possible to use any valid selector uh, within this syntax and that's going to be useful for both getting a reference to the uh, NS predicate utilities class and we'll see some other uses of it later too. Um, then there are NS aggregate expressions which are meant to be used for arrays but which we can also use uh, to create series of expressions that will be evaluated sequentially which will effectively act as the lines of our script. Um, finally, subquery and ternary expressions can be used to create loops and conditionals respectively, respectively for control flow. And additionally, uh, all the normal arithmetic and bitwise math operators can be used in NS predicates, and we'll see that become super useful for calculating addresses. This is a Py, Py Objective C script, so it's just uh, Objective C bindings for Python, or Python bindings for Objective C, um, and it uh, evaluates an NS predicate script. Uh, so this script makes two var variables: uh, standard in, uh, no, standard out, and uh, proc info, which is a file handle and the process information, respectively. Um, and these objects are instantiated using the cast class trick. Uh, it then uses a ternary expression as an if statement, so that if the process name is Python, it prints out it's Python to standard out. All, the all these expressions are wrapped in brackets so that they form uh, a single NS aggregate expression and each line here uh, is evaluated sequentially. So for a more complicated example, uh, it's probably a little hard to see, but this is a uh, brainfuck interpreter made entirely within the evaluation of a single NS expression. Um, and it uses all the, ex the things that we've seen so far. Uh, it's just a little larger. Um, it uses the cast class, class trick again to get those uh, file handle references to standard in and out. Um, it uses ternary expressions for control flow, so it checks whether, you know, the program has ended or what the current operation is. Um, and it evaluates itself recursively in order to perform unbounded loops. So instead of, of, of doing this recursive evaluation, I could have used a subquery expression, but then it would have been bounded. Um, so it was, it was easier to use a, a recursive evaluation in this case to, to do the looping. So before forced entry, uh, these NS predicate scripts were essentially unrestricted with the exception of predicates that were sent over XPC. Uh, and these predicates were often limited using something called NS predicate visitors, uh, implementations of a protocol that uh, has methods to check 
what the components of an untrusted uh, NS predicate were and if they were safe to evaluate. Uh, these implementations use the expression type property uh, to check what those expressions were and if they were a function or a key path then it would uh, potentially only allow certain specific instances of those expressions. So a limited set of selectors or a limited set of key paths. Um, however, without these restriction, restrictions and as predicates were basically arbitrary code execution and they were used as such in that forced entry sandbox escape. Now that we understand a little bit more about NS predicates and their capabilities, we can understand that forced entry sandbox escape. Um, that crazy JBIG2 VM uh, made a fake object in memory that when deallocated evaluated a series of uh, NS function expressions. And these expressions cleaned up after the initial exploit by deleting that uh, fake GIF file and they crafted another payload, another uh, array of objects that was sent to the unsandboxed comp center process. These objects were chosen such that when the target deserialized them, uh, they would immediately evaluate a new NS predicate, uh, which collected a bunch of device information before downloading and evaluating another NS predicate payload. After forced entry uh, and the increased visibility of Code Color's earlier blog post, uh, a few new restrictions were placed on NS predicate objects. Two denialists were added, uh, which prevented the use of a number of inherently dangerous classes and methods, uh, with particular focus on methods, uh, uh, classes and methods that allowed performing arbitrary method invocations and initializing arbitrary objects. Uh, the cast class trick was forbidden, and calling class methods, uh, as opposed to instance methods of objects, w was prevented. Um, However, it's important to note that most of these changes only affected first party Apple apps and processes. And as predicates evaluated in third party apps had a much smaller deny list of classes and methods uh, and were for the most part just as powerful as before. Uh, this difference was implemented through a flag value, a, through a single flag value called uh, predicate security flags. Uh, that was set for Apple processes when the class NS predicate uh, utilities was initialized. So here we can see some of that uh, deny list. This is the deny list of uh, classes. Um, so all these classes were prevented from being used and it includes things like NS bundle, which uh, is used to load uh, other shared libraries, um, and NS coder, which prevents uh, deserializing uh, new arbitrary objects. Again, trying to, to limit the number of the different objects that you could use within an NS predicate. Uh, additionally, Apple removed the CN file services DL sim method that was used both in NS predicate and slop exploits, so that's uh, selector oriented programming. Um, it was just another type of uh, exploit exploitation technique on iOS. And this method had proved to be very helpful for attackers, so it was unfortunate for us when it was removed. Um, rel relatedly, uh, NS invocation was, was hardened. Um, and it was also included in that list of forbidden classes and made generally more difficult to use for exploits. However, uh, as, we'll sh as we shall see, the denialists were way, way, way too small. And the fact that security was enforced based on this single writable flag value made it incredibly vulnerable. It was incredibly fragile. Uh, the get value method of NS value uh, wasn't on the forbidden list and could be used to perform arbitrary writes, overwriting any address with any uh, desired value. And this meant that the security flag could just be unset by simply calling get value on the number zero with the address of the security flag uh, as the argument. Um, Importantly, even though a, uh, iOS has ASLR, libraries are all slid by the same amount in every process, uh, with the slide being chosen at startup. And so if you already had code execution in one process, you could just, you know, you knew all the addresses of everything. Um, additionally, there are many different ways to leak the address from within a predicate itself. Um, so it's trivial to use an offset from a known address to find that flag 100% reliably. Um, similarly, the length of the dialysis could just be set to zero and that would remove any remaining forbidden elements because they would check the list of forbidden uh, classes and methods. The list would be zero length and say, oh, it's not on there. Um, so all these techniques described in the previous slides can be seen uh, in this predicate which disables all the security mitigations that had been introduced to predicates. First we use the self uh, dot hash to get the address of the NS predicate utilities class. So that, that hashtag self 
parentheses, um, that gets a reference to NS predicate utilities, and then the dot hash just converts it into an NS number for us. Um, with this, we can use offsets from this address to get the addresses of the security flags and the lengths of the denialists. And then once we have those addresses, we can simply use get value to overwrite them, uh, reverting NS predicates to their previous uh, fully unrestricted state. Um, and here we can also see uh, what I call the MVP of NS predicate scripts, which is a uh, non retained object value. So this is just a, a method that takes an NS number and treats it as a pointer to an object instead. Um, it's kind of like dereferencing in the context of NS predicate, and it can be used to access any class by reference uh, when the cast class trick is forbidden. It's just super useful. However, uh, after a tweet of mine that might have, might or might not have influenced Apple um, about how easily the previous mitigations were bypassed, uh, Apple struck back and they added uh, restrictions to the argument types in function expressions to exclude pointer types. Um, every Objective C method has a signature, which is the string of characters denoting the, the types of arguments and the return value uh, of the method. And in that signature, the caret and the uh, question mark characters represent uh, data and function pointers, respectively. And these were the types that were forbidden within function expressions. Additionally, the predicate security, security flags and denialist code were moved into the core foundation framework. Um, and the predicate security flags were now placed on the heap where they could be harder to locate. Uh, so that it wasn't quite as easy to overwrite them. Um, and many new entries were added to the denialists. Fortunately for me, uh, Apple overlooked the asterisk type, which refers to uh, C string pointers. Um, uh, this type really shouldn't exist, it should, should just be denoted as uh, like caret C, um, but it worked out for me here that it does exist. Um, and this means that we could simply achieve the same kind of arbitrary write uh, using get C string instead of the get value method. And once again, NS predicates could perform arbitrary operations. So this is the predicate that accomplishes the same thing as, as the previously one shown. Um, however, it uses the function set debug predicate security scoping to unset the high security flag after setting the internal re release type to three. Um, and this is a trick that's necessary because as I said before, the, the predicate security flag was moved to the heap. Um, but luckily, uh, NS predicate utilities just gave us this nice convenient method to unset it. So. Yeah, cool. Um, so here is that set debug predicate security scoping method. Um, and this is the one that unsets the high security flag that's on the heap. Um, and so that flag is now stored in the third bit of the CF predicate policy data uh, plus OX30 um, offset. Um, but this method can only unset it if a OS variant has internal content returns true. And this is what we accomplished uh, before by setting that internal release type to three uh, in the previous predicate. So like that, that's what that uh, internal value is there. It's being set to three. So while I've demonstrated how to get around the limits that Apple placed on NS predicate, I still haven't shown how arbitrary functions, arbitrary native C functions could be called now that the previous DL sim gadget has been removed. Um, luckily, there is still at least one signed reference to DLSIM that we could get uh, using the DLSIM func method of a class in the DVT Instruments Foundation framework. Um, this address could be used with the apply function info method of RB stroke accumulator from the RenderBox framework to call DLSIM and also to call all of the returned uh, function pointers that are all signed with that zero context value for pack. Um, so those function pointers, those signed function pointers could be called with a apply function info with up to four arbitrary arguments um, or more if it was okay that that uh, fifth argument was not uh, controlled. Um, you could control all the rest. Uh, so this effectively bypasses pack as even though it's not possible to sign arbitrary pointers as you would want for like a true bypass, um, the combination of the scripting capabilities within the NS predicate and the ability to use any exported function was basically more than enough to uh, accomplish any desired goal. Um, unfortunately, Apple has been cracking down on all remaining references to DLSIM that you could get in this manner, um, and this DLSIM func method is no longer uh, available in iOS 16.5 or later. 
So this is that uh, apply function method. Um, as we can see, it uses the braaz instruction to call the function pointer passed as that first argument. Uh, and this instruction authenticates and calls pointers signed with a zero context value, which is exactly what we need in order to uh, use that reference to DDL sim and use all the function pointers that that method returns. All right. Putting all the pieces together, uh, this is an NS predicate that calls NS log hmm on iOS 16.3 after removing all the mitigations protecting Apple processes. Um, it's probably too small to see, but the point is that it's very complicated, but it's still possible to do anything within an NS predicate in this version. Um, all it takes is some creativity, some knowledge of Objective-C, and uh, some useful classes that are already defined in the shared libraries of iOS and macOS. Now that we can do anything within an NS predicate, similar to what was possible before forced entry, there is only one potential impediment to exploiting processes that evaluate uh, untrusted NS predicates. Um, and that's the NS predicate visitors that I covered before. Um, and this is the most surprising thing about this research is that I found that you could just say no to NS predicate visitors. Um, each daemon implements their own version of this protocol uh, in order to only allow those expressions that it expects to be in the, the NS predicates that that uh, daemon receives. Um, and it uses the expression type to property to check uh, what kind of expression each component of a predicate is. So that simple expressions like constant values um, can be allowed and more dangerous ones like function and key path expressions could be forbidden or limited to a, a certain uh, safe subset. subset. Um, however, the expression type was just an integer um, that was read directly from the serialized data sent by an untrusted process. Um, and this meant that setting every expression type to zero uh, in a malicious edit predicate led the receiver to interpret it as only containing constant values and that bypassed all additional validation. Uh, so here's an example of an NS predicate visitor uh, implementation for the photo library queries. Um, we can see that it used the expression type to decide whether additional checks need to be made on the expression that it visits. So here it checks to see if it's a key path expression and it gets the key path and then it later checks it to, against a, a list of known, known good key paths. Um, and on the XML on the right here, uh, this shows the serialized representation of the NS expression on the left. And we can see that the expression type is just an integer within this XML. And this is, XML is controlled entirely by the sender, so they can just set it to whatever they want. Um, and this is the actual code of init with coders, probably like impossible to read. Yeah, uh, but it's just reading out that NS expression type field and passing it to NS expression init with expression type. Um, you're just going to have to trust me if you can't read it that that's how it works. Uh, so many different daemons could be exploited uh, using this bypass. Um, so it includes uh, core at D, context store D, and they uh, just aggregate information about user behavior on the device, um, as, as well as app store D, which can be used to install arbitrary apps. They still have to be signed though. Um, OS log service, which is uh, accessible by any app um, and can access any logs potentially containing sensitive information, and on uh, iPad OS Springboard, which is the home app that um, it's kind of like Explored IEXE on Windows. It's kind of like that background app. Um, so using these vulnerabilities, a uh, malicious app could gain access to app location and notification data, including message contents, um, and potentially even uh, install arbitrary apps on the target device and on paired devices. Uh, it's pretty simple to find these XPC service clients that send predicates like uh, this one, which is CD Interaction Recorder, uh, by grepping the Objective-C headers. And that's the great thing about reversing Objective-C libraries and apps, is that they have to contain this header information, um, because that's uh, how the dynamic dispatching of methods works. Um, so here we can see many methods that take NS predicate arguments, and these arguments are sent to the Core Duet D service. And this is a free descript, which when attached to a process that has the entitlements to co communicate with Core Duet D, sends uh, an NS predicate that will cause a crash on access to OX4141 you know, A's. Um, it uses the method count contacts using predicate error, which takes a predicate argument and sends it to Core Duet D. 
Um, and by calling this method, uh, this function expression, and having its uh, expression type set to zero, we can bypass the NS predicate visitor that Cordoet DD uses. On the iPad, uh, any app can communicate with a Springboard XPC service that determines which app scene uh, should be used for handling different types of events. Um, and this is done using an NS predicate provided by the app. Uh, this predicate is validated with UI target content identifier predicate validator. Mouthful. Um, but like the others, this uh, visitor rel relies on the expression type value to determine whether expressions are safe and therefore can be bypassed. By using a malicious predicate visitor, we can construct any NS predicate and use the visitor to set all the its expression types to be zero, denoting co constant values. So we can actually use our predicate visitor to defeat other predicate visitors. This is the actual predicate that we're going to use to exploit Springboard. Um, so first, it uses get cstring to perform the arbitrary writes needed to clear the deny lists and set the internal release type to three. Then it calls the set debug predicate security scoping, which unsets that high security flag. Finally, it uses uh, NS file manager, which was previously on that uh, forbidden class list, and it uses it to copy the contents of the user notifications directory to the crash report directory so that we can copy them off the device. Um, in a real scenario, they would be like zipped up and sent over HTTP to an attacker-controlled server. There's lots of classes that'll help you do that. Um, but just for our purposes here, it's simpler to just uh, do this. Um, the predicate then accepts our evil NS predicate visitor, which sets all the expression types to zero. Um, and finally, the predicate is assigned to the scene activation conditions, which is what sends it to Springboard to be evaluated when an event like opening the app um, is generated. Okay, so I think like this isn't going to work, or it is going to work. Uh, no, not really. Okay. Hold on one second. There we go, cool. I think it's good, right? Uh, no. All right, so here is a demo of uh, exploiting this uh, springboard vulnerability. So on the left, we have our uh, script that's just waiting to receive the notifications from the malicious process. On our right, we saw that we're running iOS 16.1. Uh, and we can see that we have a notification that says, shh, this is a secret. Um, and we're going to open our uh, malicious app, which has the helpful uh, link steal notifications. And then we will see that our notifications are stolen there on the left. It's kind of small. I should have made it bigger. Um, but it stole the notifications. Cool. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. All right. Come back. Hey, yeah. All right, so the conclusion. Luckily for the security of iOS uh, and macOS devices, um, Apple has finally begun to limit NS predicates in ways that are less easily bypassed. So now the return and argument types of function expressions must be objects, even in third-party apps, and there's no flag that can be overwritten to change this. Um, predicates could still be used by malicious apps to bypass any kind of meaningly, uh, meaningful app store review. So it's, they're still very useful in a, in a context where the attacker can control you know, that environment. Um, and uh, I don't think that they are looking out for this type of uh, evaluation of dynamic uh, NS predicates in App Store review because it's actually something that Apple does within their own processes. Um, so until uh, Apple makes fundamental changes to both the behavior of function and key path expressions, they're still going to be very useful to uh, exploitation. So for the foreseeable future, they will still be dangerous. There'll still be landmines scattered everywhere within the code of iOS and macOS waiting to explode, uh, destroying the effectiveness of all the amazing security mitigations on these devices, um, and they remain Apple's predicament. Thank you. <laughs>